Malaysian state at the north of Borneo Island. And these forests are home to a panoply of animals and birds, including many rare and endemic species. The world we live in is filled with an enormous amount of different types of species. The vast majority of them live in the jungles of the world. However, scientists have recently found some pretty wild animals in the jungles of Indonesia. The world is crazy, yo, and it's about to get crazier. Your eyes are not ready for the contents of this video. From the increasingly rare sun bear to the utterly adorable slow loris, here are 20 strange things found in the Borneo jungle. <sighs> Number 20, Sambar Deer. One of the largest deer species in the world is the nocturnal sambar. Male adults may grow to be more than 7 feet long and weigh more than 440 pounds. There was even one measured at more than 1,000 pounds. Despite their enormous size, they are normally a shy species. This deer is starting to sound kind of cuddly. Though when they get startled, they unleash loud barks known as puking or belling in response to potential predators. In a hostile attitude, they will often dramatically stamp their feet and lift their mane. Considering how big these deer are, that must be a very intimidating sight to see. So don't piss off these shy guys. The sambar's size and appearance vary greatly, which has caused substantial taxonomic uncertainty in the past. More than 40 distinct scientific names have been used to describe the species as a result. Their habitats include Thailand, Taiwan, Indochina, and our lovely Borneo jungle in Indonesia. The IUCN Red List has categorized the Sambaras as a vulnerable species since 2008. Populations have significantly decreased as a result of intense local rebellion and industrial habitat exploitation. Rare topic. Get ready to find out why this video is called Scientist's Terrifying New Discovery Hidden in the Borneo Jungle. Back in 2011, a group of geologists studying the topography of the Borneo Jungle embarked on a helicopter. They came back with a striking image and couldn't believe their eyes. In the middle of the forest stood this colossal alien statue. After calling a team of archaeologists to search the area, nothing else was found. What is super interesting is that no known minerals conform to the type of stone used in this statue. To this day, no scientists have been able to provide a straight explanation for its origins. People started sharing their thoughts online while this image was shared all over the web. They were trying to figure out what this sculpture meant. Some theorized that it was an ancient religious statue that was evidence of a lost civilization. Others suggested it was built and offered on Earth by aliens. An interstellar statue of liberty? Who knows? Let us know what you think in relation to what we just showed on screen with the hashtag rare topic. And now to the next one. Number 19, orangutan. Only located in Borneo, the Bornean orangutans are a critically endangered giant ape. Only about 1,500 Northwest Bornean orangutans survive, making them the smallest and most endangered population, whereas Central Bornean orangutans make up the biggest group with roughly 35,000 members. These orangutans were previously widespread throughout Southeast Asia, according to fossil evidence. Before 1996, when the Sumatran orangutan was recognized as a distinct species, Bornean and Sumatran orangutans were believed to be just subspecies. This species lives in lowland rainforests, wetlands, and mountains up to 5,000 feet in height. It is virtually entirely arboreal. The majority of their time is spent moving quickly through the woods, traversing them, and swinging from branches. That's to say, these monkeys don't have much of a problem with vertigo. Orangutans from Borneo have a reddish-brown shaggy coat. In contrast to their shorter, weaker legs, orangutans have long, powerful arms that allow them to push themselves through the trees. They also have about 13 vocalizations. In tiny social grouplings, they smack their lips to communicate, and it seems that when they're frustrated, they grind their teeth which maybe explains why their teeth always look so chipped and whatnot. Number 18, Sunda pangolin. The critically endangered Sunda pangolin has been called an artichoke with legs. You wouldn't say so just by looking, but these prehistoric animals have existed for 80 million years. This funky little critter is the only mammal covered in protective keratin scales and has a freaky tongue that stretches out longer than its body. Lacking teeth, this long sticky tongue serves to collect ants and termites. A startled pangolin will cover its head with its front legs, exposing its scales to any potential predator. 
If touched or grabbed, it'll roll up completely into a ball, while the sharp scales on the tail can be used to lash out. Little is known about this elusive creature, so it's difficult to estimate wild population sizes. Also called scaly anteaters because of their preferred diet, pangolins are the most trafficked mammal in the world, with demand primarily in Asia and in growing amounts in Africa for their meat and scales. There is also demand in the United States for pangolin products, particularly for their leather to be used in boots, bags, and belts. And yet all eight pangolin species are protected under national and international laws. And two are listed as critically endangered on the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species. Number 17, Sun Bear. The Sun Bear is a whopping 2.3 feet tall at the shoulders and is four to five feet long from head to tail. Just kidding everyone, it's actually the smallest bear in the world. Except for a crescent-shaped breast patch and a nose that varies in color from gray to pale orange, the Sun Bear's coat is entirely black. The patch might be creamy yellow, orange, or white, and it can vary in size and shape. According to some ancient mythologies, it symbolizes the rising sun. Also, this golden mark could increase the size of a sun bear during a fight. The enormous bare-footed paws and long curled claws allow them to grasp and climb trees. They have an unusual walking style with all four legs pointed inward, kind of like a penguin. Sun bears are nocturnal animals and use their excellent sense of smell to hunt for termites, beetles, earthworms, and bees. They also use their sharp claws to break apart trees and insect nests. Sun bears eat a lot of food, like figs, and extract honey from bees using their incredibly long tongues. Although little is known about these bears' reproductive practices, research suggests that mating relationships may be monogamous. One of the rarest bear species, sun bears are progressively dwindling in numbers. So try and catch a glimpse now before it's too late. Number 16, flying frog. The Borneo flying frog is a unique species to Malaysian Borneo and was only very recently discovered. Due to spending most of its time up in the forest canopy and only coming down to mate, this beautiful frog is seldom seen. The Borneo flying frog really can fly, in contrast to other frogs that must laboriously travel down a tree from branch to branch. Technically speaking, it's more akin to skydiving or gliding. They can glide at a 45 degree angle because of their webbed feet and aerodynamically flattened bodies. When they do glide, they look like a frisbee or something. This small species of frog, whose males only reach a height of 1.4 inches, was found in Sarawak's Gunung Mulu National Park. The amphibian, also known as the Mulu flying frog, is distinctive in that it has bright green skin at night, but turns to a brown tint during the day. It also has a short, pointed snout. Its eyes also change hue in unison. Number 15, the striking zebra-striped fish. In 2008, the zebra-striped fish Ermot Insignit received a formal description. And judging based off how the fish looked, the people who did name this fish didn't really put too much thought into it. The eight-banded barb, as the fish has also become known, is one of 17 fish found in the heart of Borneo in recent years. It is 3.6 centimeters in length and normally lives in shallow, shady streams and wetlands in the rainforest. This sort of habitat's water is frequently murky with a substrate made of mud or decaying leaves, twigs, and branches. Due to the rainforest canopy above, such places are usually poorly lit, which works well for the zebra-striped fish, seeing as it is known to be a rather timid, hesitant feeder. The fish were even discovered hiding out amid dangling tree roots and watery plants. Due to their tendency to shoal, they must be kept in groups of six or more fish and should only be used in established softwater aquariums. These fish live in streams in blackwater forests in the natural. Thus, the aquarium at home must closely resemble those streams. Number 14, the rhinoceros hornbill. A seldom seen monster resides high in the canopy of Borneo's dense rainforest. You can hear the enormous whoosh, whoosh, whoosh of flapping wings if you listen carefully. This is a gentle giant, so don't be afraid. The bird in question, the rhinoceros hornbill. It's so big, in fact, that it's considered one of the biggest birds found in Asian jungles. They live on trees whose diameters can grow up to 70 meters. I'm sure living up there would make me queasy. A sizable number of hornbills found in the jungle is what's called the rhinoceros hornbill. These bad boys could survive up to 35 years in captivity. In Borneo, it may be found in lowland and montane temperatures, 
tropical and subtropical environments, and mountain rainforests up to 1,400 meters in elevation. This hornbill is so popular that it is even the national bird of Malaysia and the state bird of Sarawak. The 80 to 90 centimeter long rhinoceros hornbill is considered a pretty large arboreal hornbill. The tail is white with a black band, while the legs and vent are mostly black in color. The color of the enormous bill and cask, which are orange and crimson, is caused by preen oil that is applied from the preen gland above the tail. A big, beautiful bird for a big, beautiful jungle. Nature doesn't get much better than this. Number 13, Chan's Megastick. Phobaticus chani, a gigantic stick insect, is thought to live in the upper rainforest canopy making it very secretive and challenging to study. Not unlike a lot of other animals on this list, there is relatively little information available on the biology and ecology of this insect. The species not only holds the record for the world's longest insect, but it also has the longest body, reaching an astonishing 14 inches. When the insect stands, it can grow up to two feet in height. This unusual animal has only ever been found in three specimens, all of which came from the heart of Borneo. Borneo has a long history of being a thrilling location for finding monstrous insects. The 2004 discovery of enormous cockroaches is just one such instance. The species is famous not just for its size, but also for its eggs, which have wing-like extensions that enable them to be distributed by the wind as the female drops them from trees. Stick insects are classified into over 3,000 different species, the majority of which are located in the tropics and subtropics. Stick insects often do not move about much during the day, depending instead on their camouflage to protect them from predators. Number 12, orchids. Due to illicit logging, forest damage from fires, and loss of natural habitat, Borneo's orchid species are now considered to be endangered. Hundreds of orchid species are on the verge of extinction as a result of the increased exploitation of the forests of West Borneo, including gold mining and illegal burning. The native orchids of Borneo are in risk due to economic causes such as illicit wild orchid gathering and trade by domestic and international orchid hunters, and rising orchid demand from consumers. While these flowers may be some of the most beautiful in the world, most consumers have no idea of the impact finding them has on this jungle. Chairani Siragar of the College of Agriculture at the University of Tajungpura in Indonesia launched a three-year project to find and document endangered native orchid species in West Borneo because she was concerned about the extinction of Borneo's native orchids. In order to identify and compile a list of every orchid species that exists in West Borneo, a study was done in order to do so before the flowers and the jungle they live in disappear. Number 11, the spectacled flower pecker. A wonderful species of bird in the Diaceidae family of flower peckers is called the spectacled flower pecker. It was originally seen in Borneo's jungles in 2009, but it wasn't officially documented or given a scientific name until 2019, owing to insufficient data and the absence of a body for scientific investigation. By trapping a visiting flower pecker at the Bella Long Canopy Walkway, the Institute of Biodiversity and Environmental Research at the University Brunei Darussalam announced their intention to capture, collect, and formally name the spectacled flower pecker in a press release in January 2017. The first bird seen had distinct white arcs above and below its eyes, giving it the appearance of having a shattered eye ring. A thin, dusky malar surrounded the white throat, dipping into the gray sides and being separated from the center of the underparts by a white stripe. The top body was a slate gray color. The carpal joints had big, pure white pectoral tufts coming out of them. Legs, beak, and eyes were all dark. This must have been very exciting for the scientists that devoted so much time to finding and researching it. Number 10, Horsefield's Tarsier. These magnificent oddballs with amazing climbing and leaping abilities resemble Yoda quite a bit. They are nocturnal and they can move through the dark thanks to their enormous yellow eyes. They are the largest eyed animal in the world when compared to their size, with one eyeball being the same size as their brain. Tarsiers can precisely judge distances for safe leaping thanks to the forward sloping angle of their eyes, which is beneficial given that they can leap up to 18 feet. Tarsiers can spin their heads almost 360 degrees because they can turn their heads almost 180 degrees in each direction. Despite their charming appearance though, they are the only species of extant carnivorous ape. They utilize their skilled hands to aggressively trap their prey. Beetles, cockroaches, locusts, moths, grasshoppers, butterflies, ants, and cicadas are just a few of the variety of insects that they eat. 
They will also hunt birds, bats, frogs, and snakes, including venomous species, for a feast. In addition to several lowland locations in Sabah and Brunei, the Bornean subspecies is also known to occur above 900 meters, 3,000 feet, in the Kelabit uplands in northern Sarawak. Other reports indicate that it originated in Tanjung Marue in central Kalimantan. This species inhabits both main and secondary woods, as well as forests along the coast and those that abut plantations. It's also found in these habitats. Number nine, giant red flying squirrel. One of the biggest flying squirrels in Southeast Asia is the red giant flying squirrel. It's primarily nocturnal and prefers tall forest, though it'll also use nearby badly damaged forest where there is less dense tree cover since this species can glide quite far between trees. According to reports, this giant squirrel can glide up to around 100 meters. The species builds its nest in tree cavities and its food consists of numerous forest fruits and seeds as well as fresh young leaves. One of the biggest arboreal squirrels, all the different populations have at least some reddish brown above and light under parts. But the colors vary significantly across different geographic regions. The taxonomic position of those in the Sundaic area is largely accepted, but there is significant doubt over the others which have been recognized as their own species. The red squirrel can be found from northern India and Nepal through sections of southern China, Myanmar, and Thailand to peninsular Malaysia and, of course, Borneo. Though after being unreported since 1986, it may be extinct in Singapore. Number eight, saltwater crocodile. The biggest species of living reptiles are these saltwater crocodiles. Male adults can grow to a maximum height of six to seven meters. Females are considerably smaller and seldom grow taller than three meters. In comparison to other species, the skews are tiny and the scales are shaped like an oval. Young saltwater crocodiles have pale yellow bodies and tails with black patches and stripes. Before the crocodile reaches adulthood and changes color, this coloring persists for several years. As an adult, the hue is significantly darker with lighter tan or gray parts. Ventral surface is either white or yellow in color. The lower sides of the body have stripes, but they don't go down to the belly. With black bars, the tail is gray. The heavyset jaw of saltwater crocodiles has at least 64 teeth and a maximum of 68 teeth. These are some apex predators right here. The islands of New Guinea, Indonesia, and the shores of Northern Australia are where you may most frequently see Crocodilus porosus, AKA the saltwater crocodile. It extends westward through Sri Lanka's and Eastern India's coasts, all the way across Southeast Asia's river mouths to central Vietnam, past Borneo and into the Philippines, and even out to the Solomon Islands. Additionally, freshwater marshes, billabongs, and rivers may contain it. Even if you're way out in the ocean somewhere, watch out, these crocs are notoriously strong swimmers. Number seven, slow loris. You might want to pick up and squeeze this small ape because it looks like a bug-eyed ball of fluff, but you shouldn't. The slow loris's charming bulging eyes conceal a sinister secret, potent poison. When threatened, they lick their mouth to disseminate the evil fluid around their lips. They secrete it from a gland in their eyebrows. <laughs> then if they bite you, it's gonna hurt a lot. They're kind of like the sirens of the animal realm. Borneo regarded the slow loris several hundred years ago as the guardian of the afterlife. There are several superstitions associated with the animal, including that it sees ghosts, brings good or bad luck, and that each of us will have our own slow loris to hang out with when we pass away. Despite being categorized as a primate, the Bornean slow loris resembles a little lemur. Their sharp pointy teeth are frequently removed with nail cutters without anesthetic before sale since they are little, attractive, and in high demand as pets. All slow loris species look essentially the same. All of them are fairly little despite their different sizes. They have large flat faces, round heads, small ears, and fuzzy bodies. They have opposable large toes on their rear foot, which gives them the remarkable gripping strength needed to go through the trees. Their huge forward-facing eyes are the most noticeable trait. During their late night foraging, these animals grab every sliver of light that is accessible to them. Number six, striped tree skink. The Borneo skink, also known as the striped tree skink or Borneo skink, is a kind of indigenous reptile to Borneo. It's a nocturnal and arboreal species that spends the majority of its time in trees that are up to 37 meters tall. In fact, 
The distinctive striped tree skink can only be found in Borneo. It only ever comes down to the ground to bury its two to four eggs. However, it's also known to do so amid epiphytes growing in the tops of trees. Its primary food is searching for insects near tree trunks. The species may be recognized by its head and neck that are black and white striped, as well as its olive brown body that has light colored flecks throughout. The species seems to be quite outgoing and accessible. It has a sturdy body and is easily identified by its head, which is striped in black and white, as well as by the brownish gray body covered in dark and light patches. Number five, flame-colored snake. The stunning Kopstein's bronzeback, also known as Dendralophus hasi, has a maximum length of five feet. The vivid flame-like neck color of this unusual species, which was found in Borneo in 2007, merges into an iridescent pattern of blue, green, and brown. Although the snake may appear appealing, it is aggressive and its bite is terribly painful. The species has been spotted in Singapore a few meters from water among the sparse streamside vegetation and climbing up the trunks of skinny saplings to reach the mid canopy where it is known to exist near a stream gully. The ecology of the species is little understood, however. Its body is considerably more slender than the painted bronze backs and it lacks the painted bronze backs wide black stripe behind the eye and down the neck. Additionally, its head is orange rather than brown. A huge elongated head that is different from the body, enormous eyes, and an expanded row of vertebral scales are among its other characteristics that are typical of its genus. If the snake seems like it is friend-shaped, you should still not touch it, people. Number four, clouded leopard. This secretive leopard prefers to dwell in the treetops, has amazing climbing skills, and smaller species like deer, pigs, and even monkeys. It's incredibly uncommon to witness a clouded leopard in the wild due to its nocturnal and sneaky habits. It is the only large cat found in Borneo and has been dubbed the most beautiful wild cat in the world. The best place to see one is at Deramakot Forest Reserve, if you dare. The leopard is referred to as the tree tiger in Indonesian because of the dark oval patches on its fur that are thought to mimic clouds. It has been shown that clouded leopards descend trunks head first and move along branches backwards. Their tails have the potential to become as long as their bodies, which is helpful for balance while scurrying up a tree to get a good view position. The IUCN Red List of Threatened Species now lists the clouded leopard as vulnerable. Sunda clouded leopards are classified as endangered because their habitat has been drastically diminished by deforestation, and it is estimated that fewer than 10,000 of them are still living in the wild. Researchers are informed of sightings on Borneo big cat safaris, which can significantly aid in the success of conservation efforts. Number three, Borneo pygmy elephant. Borneo is home to some of the cutest creatures, including the tiniest elephant in the world, which has enormous Dumbo ears and a lengthy tail. The Bornean pygmy elephant, while only reaching a height of around nine feet, is the biggest mammal on the island. The amiable and attractive elephants are still in desperate need of protection, as estimates say that about 1,500 to 3,000 of them still live in the wild due to deforestation and Bornean elephants were discovered by WWF to be genetically distinct from other Asian elephants, despite once being thought to be the last of a tamed herd entrusted to the Sultan of Sulu in the 17th century. These elephants were separated from their relatives in mainland Asia and Sumatra some 300,000 years ago, according to DNA data. Borneo elephants are a kinder variety than Asian and African elephants. And some experts think that they are descended from a domestic herd because of their calm disposition. The Sultan of Sulu received a collection of captive elephants in the 17th century. These elephants were then released into the Borneo forest. Only 1,500 pygmy elephants, largely found in Sabah in Malaysian Borneo, are thought to still exist in the wild. That is to say, they are endangered. Poor little guys. All they want to do is be friends. Number two, Sumatran rhinos. Speaking of small things that want to be friends, Sumatran rhinos are the smallest rhinoceroses still in existence. They have a thick coat of hair and are more similar to extinct woolly rhinos than any other living rhino species. Calves are born with a thick coat that changes from reddish brown to sparse, bristly, and nearly black as they age. Regrettably, the Sumatran rhino is in danger of being extinct, just like the elephants. Though the precise number is unknown, estimations indicate that less than 100 people still exist in northern Sumatra and the center of Borneo. 
they are the only two-horned rhino in Asia and have a reputation for being so elusive that even rangers hardly ever spot one. In spite of the fact that you probably won't see one while in Borneo on a Borneo excursion, you've got to believe they exist. The Sumatran rhino originally ranged as far as Bhutan, eastern India, the foothills of the eastern Himalayas, Myanmar, Thailand, probably as far as south as Vietnam and China, and the Malay Peninsula. Only the Indonesian islands of Sumatra and Borneo are home to the species now. The third subspecies is likely gone, according to experts. Number one, mouse deer. Speaking of small things in the jungle, what about the smallest hooved mammal in the world? It's not a deer or a mouse, it's a deer mouse. These little guys are nocturnal, lonely creatures. It grows to a height of just 12 inches. The females are overachievers. They can conceive just two hours after giving birth and their young fawns can stand after just 30 minutes. They can be observed grazing on leaves, shoots, fruits, and occasionally even mushrooms on forest floors. They resemble a stuffed animal virtually due to their spherical bodies and slender legs, but those adorable tiny teeth are actually very sharp. When irritated or tend to fend off predators and alert other mouse deer to danger, a male may violently beat his hooves. They can hold their breath for up to four minutes despite being terrestrial animals, and they frequently dive into the water to avoid predators. Subtropical or tropical damp climates make up its native habitat. This jungle is truly wild. What other weird creatures could it hide? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.